Howdy, everyone. Uh, my name is Mickey Hudson, and I am hosting today's Who's Corner Viking Facebook Live. Today, we are going to be embroidering on tulle. So tulle, netting, um, all that kind of stuff. So uh, let's just get ready and dive right in. Um, I am actually changing my bobbin case real quick. There we go. Um, sorry about that. It was a last minute, and I thought I was going to make it in time, but you caught me. So, I feel a little bit like Julia Child dropping the eggs on the counter at the moment. Um, a little bit off script, but there we go. So, how many of you have ever embroidered on knit? Um, or try to embroider on knit. I thought about it, but we're scared to embroider on it. Or not knit, but uh, netting. This is gonna be a great class for you. So today is June. June is the beginning of summer, which means outdoors, pride, barbecues, etc. So many of us that uh, have outdoor food where we do barbecues or picnics or stuff like that, we often use, and if you don't use, they're great, but we often use these cute little food tents. Now these are designed to cover up your food to keep the critters from getting on it. So there's a whole bunch of these. You can purchase these by themselves or you can make your own. There are plenty of patterns available as well. So I'm going to show you some tips of um, making your own. But this is a great little something that you can purchase as is, and it comes apart. So it makes it great for embroidering. So you can take it apart and embroider lickety-splickety. So I'm going to show you how we did that. So I want to show you this little guy here because isn't he cute? So these are just some little clovers that I pulled off of the MySonet Embroidery Library. And it does fold up nice and neat. So when you're done, you can tuck it away. But what's so cool about this is when you close this, the little ends will pull off right here. So these little ends pull off and all of a sudden we'll have this nice flat surface to embroider. So now we have all of this that we can embroider nice and flat. Isn't that cool? But if you take a look at this netting, this netting is what is called mosquito netting. So there's tulle, and this is called mosquito netting. And you can purchase mosquito netting uh, by the yard or by the package. But as you'll see, the tulle and the mosquito netting are very similar. So they are very similar and they embroider just as nice. So the tool will come in many colors and the mosquito netting usually comes in either black or white. So that is something to think about. Um, when it comes to the tool, you'll see that I use tool for my little jacket here. Um, and all I did was do some embroidery on knit and I cut out the yokes and added the, the stitched out tool fabric. So this was just black tulle, just like this yellow. So very, very, very cool. Get my little critter out of the way. I have a, a metal hoop here and the little metal tabs are, my little metal pieces keep getting stuck on the magnets. So that's why I keep pulling. Um, <clears throat> Are there any questions 
about the tool. Okay. So some things that are very important when it comes to stitching on tool is the stabilizer. So one of the things with the stabilizer is you want to um, use a wash away stabilizer. So Aqua Magic, Dissolve Away, um, et cetera. Let me show you what some of those look like. So the Aqua Magic is the one that looks like fabric. So it washes away, but it is very stable. So it's great. This is what I usually use as my base. So I hoop this and I lay my tool on top and I'll we'll show you as well. Um, but this I add as my base. And what is really great is all of the leftover pieces um, I will save. So when you, I do freestanding lace and I soak away my, my lace, I actually put the extra pieces into the water and it adds stiffener. So my freestanding lace can be very, very stiff. So save your extra pieces for that. Um, but this is the Aqua Magic. Um, there is the Aqua Magic, which is by itself. And then there is like Aqua Magic Plus, which has a sticky back to it, which some people like to use. I used to use that a lot, but now I just use the, the Aqua Magic. And then there is the other kinds of dissolve away that look more like plastic and, you know, uh, leftover wrap. <laughs> I don't want to use a name, but there's. This is a heavy duty or dissolve away max, and it is quite thick. And this works really well, but I actually prefer a lighter weight for on top. So I just use the dissolve away. And this just looks like plastic wrap. It's very, very lightweight. One thing that I do want to caution you about if you have a lot of stabilizers, was when I first pulled out and started playing with the knit for the or the tool for this uh, Facebook Live, I pulled out my handy dandy this stuff. This looks very close to this, except for this is a a heat away clear and melt. So this requires the iron, which you can iron tool and netting and stuff like that. You just want to make sure that your iron doesn't get too hot. You don't want to melt it, but you can press it and, and all that kind of stuff. But using the clear and melt, it doesn't clear and melt enough for knit for my liking. And I'll show, I have an example. I will show you what I mean. So I would really recommend to stick to the Aqua Magics. Now, again, it's one of those things that, um, if you talk to other teachers, people are going to tell you different things. You're going to find what you like. But if you're trying this for the first time, get an Aqua Magic and get a Dissolve Away for the top. That's where you're going to start. And then as you start getting comfortable, you can experiment, which is what we all do. And that's how we have 9,000 different stabilizers. We have our favorite stabilizers for different things. All right, any questions about the stabilizers? You guys are quiet over there. All right, so let's talk about, I'm done with you, let me get you out of my way. So let's talk about hooping. So I'm just going to use the little metal hoop here. And I've got the uh, large metal hoop, which is 240 by 150. Which, how much is that in inches? I have a little trick for you when it comes to, uh, oh, my scissors are moving. Okay. Uh, when it comes to turning millimeters into inches. Um, if you Think about it as money. How much? Let me get this going. All right, my scissors are, of course, not 
problem is I have left-handed scissors, so they are not cooperating for me. I have to do that weird little angle. Excuse me while I grab a working pair of scissors. There we go. There we go. All right. So I've got my little piece of aqua magic. Let me go back. So I was talking about turning uh, millimeters into inches before my scissors so rudely interrupted me. So if you think of one inch equals 25.4, blah, blah, blah. I can't do that. One inch equals 25. One inch equals 25 cents, and you turn the millimeters into money. So if I have a hoop that is 250 by 150, how many quarters are in a dollar fifty? So six. So this is six inches wide. By how many quarters are in two dollars and forty cents? Anyone? Anyone? So there's eight, nine, a little under 10. So the 240 by 150 hoop is six by 10. And I do that for all of my millimeters. Um, and it's just a great big old conversion. Okay. So what I did here was, whoops. I come back here. Sorry, I meant to move in first. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just hoop my Aqua Magic stabilizer, and I'm going to take my little food cover and pull up in one of the panels. Now, one of the things that you can do is you can mark the center, you can do all of that, which I did on my finished one. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold this in half and get the center of this base. And on the metal hoop, there is a little guide here. There's a little a raised uh, button, a raised uh, marking. That is your center. So you will have the center on the cross and the center up and down as well. So I will come here and I'll find my center and I can position this right on my center. And I can remove my magnet and there's that. And then I'm just going to make sure that it's very, very smooth and reposition and make sure that this is very, very smooth. Now, one thing that I do like to do is I like my focal points. So I will find a focal point. And in this case, my focal point here is this little seam. So decide where you want this seam. Do you want it up here or do you want it here? I chose down below. But you can put a mark in it. You can choose a part of the lace. To be your focal point but that will also help you keep that straight across which makes it super nice because you've heard me say it before i'm a speedy sewer so i like to make things as quick and easy as possible so what i would also do is uh mark when i mark this part i would also mark the center up here so that you can come up here and you can feel for that center. There it is. And then you can magnet this down. So if you do not have the metal hoops, oh, they are awesome. I recommend them. So now I'm just going to come and I'm going to just kind of pull this a little taut and smooth that out. And I can come over here and pull this a little taut and smooth this out. So how are we doing, you guys? Does that look easy? Let me 
questions, Amy? Okay. So now I'm going to come and uh, lay a piece of my water soluble, the dissolve away, which is the lighter weight on top. And once again, I can just grab that mat magnet and move it out of the way. I'm going to move you over just a bit. And I'm going to grab this magnet. up to the top and this is something that I normally do at my cutting table so it's not quite as awkward as it looks here so I usually have a flat surface that I work on but it is very important to make sure that you don't have any um, twist or puckers you need to you really want to double check that the tool is flat because it will stitch in little pleats and puckers. Now, it's not the end of the world if that happens, but it's still something that is nice to, to prevent. So let's see, one of these had a little pleat in it that I didn't care for too much. And see, now I can't even find it. Um, <laughs> yep, can't find it. So, there's one of, here you can kind of see this one is a little wrinkled. Maybe you can see that. to lend itself. There we go. Can you see how that's kind of uh, the shading there? That is showing that it's rippling and not laying flat. Whereas if you look at some of the others, they are flat. Well, here it is. Here it is. Found it. So here's where it's really trying to pleat this. I wish you could see it from my view because it's really noticeable from where I'm sitting. So yeah, can you see it there? Um, so we got a little bit of the pleat in here. Like I said, it is very forgiving because when you look at it straight on, you don't quite see it, okay? This little bit here, this is because I finished this project uh, before uh, the Facebook Live today. So when I rinsed it, this is just a little piece of the water soluble. So when the Facebook Live is over, I will just go up and give it another soak uh, because obviously I, I rushed it. When it comes to, I will come back and talk about this again, but um, when it comes to dissolving water soluble, if you've ever worked with water soluble before and got frustrated with the dissolving uh, part of it, um, there's a reason that that can happen. And I was really bad at it. I did not even like using water soluble. I would do everything in my power to avoid it because it was so hard to get out. And what I found was that when I was dissolving it, I was going to too, too far of extremes. So I used to try really hot, hot water and it would just goo and not dissolve. And then I went to the other extreme where I was cold water and it would goo and not dissolve. And it was very, very frustrating until somebody said, just room temperature. So I decided to give it a try. I filled a bowl with room temperature water, put that in. It was magic. The, the aqua magic just literally melted away. So if you are finding that you are having trouble dissolving your uh, water soluble, just keep it room temperature, very mid warm, lukewarm. Don't go into any extremes. And what 
whatever you do, don't throw it in the washer until you've dissolved it away. And anybody in the audience who has ever done that is sitting there shaking their head going, yeah, don't ever do it. It's a nightmare because it doesn't dissolve. It just goes up and it gets into everything. So don't do that. Uh, do it in a bowl. Rinse it out in lukewarm water. Okay. Everybody got that. Okay. All right. But we want to make sure that everything is nice and clear, uh, smooth, not clear. So I'm going to come over to my, I'm going to go to embroidery. And I'm not going to stitch the whole thing out, but I do want to um, show you a little bit. So here's my little bees, and I'm going to go ahead and tell it the right poop. So for those of you that have, yes, I do. Um, it's just been brought to my attention. I have a sewing fit on my machine. Yes, I do. And that's okay. Um, but what we're going to do, I will we'll change it in a moment. But what we want to do is we want to make sure that we arrive at the right hoop. Now, I've had some, I have seen, um, Yes. Uh, are these the same wash away instructions for dissolve away, Max? Yes. So it's the same lukewarm. It just dissolves away. It's just, it literally melts like butter in a hot pan. It is amazing. So lukewarm water and it will just dissolve. Um, but I see a lot sometimes on the message boards about this. Uh, it's like I'm trying to do my 240 by 150 hoop and it's not recognizing it. Some of these, there's the 240, uh, 240 by 150. There is a 240, or excuse me, not the 260, 240 by 150 with an M next to it. Uh, there is a one that has an E next to it. Those letters mean something. So the M next to the 240 by 150 is a metal hoop in that size. When you see the E, that's an endless embroidery hoop. So there's these little guys are telling you things. So if you ever select your 240 by 150 and go to stitch out and it's not letting you, just double check that you have the right 240 by 150 or the right one for what you're doing. I want the M because I am using the metal hoop. All right. And then I'm gonna go ahead and tell it to go. Yes, I know you guys are freaking out um, because I have the wrong foot on. It's I have the sewing foot on, and it's asking for the sensor cue foot. I am going to get there. I also have my um, zigzag plate on, which I normally have my straight stitch when I embroider. But I'm going to go ahead and baste around the design. This is an optional thing. Um, I just do it because I'm so used to doing it. But honestly, I've done it with and without. Uh, I have not really seen much of a difference. But I, it's it's a little crutch for me, so I prefer to do it. And I'm going to go ahead and tell it to go OK. And I will slide this on. And here I'm going to come over and help you guys relax a bit, a little bit, because I am going to change my foot. So I'm going to take my ankle off. This is another little tip that I always recommend is whenever I take my ankle off, I want to make sure that I have a foot attached uh, because it makes it much harder to misplace it if I have a foot attached. When it's just this little guy, he's very easy to lose. So I always leave a my foot attached. I will pop this guy on. So another little tip for you guys, since this is a Facebook Live and I'm getting tips. If you've ever um, tried to put on this foot and you've had trouble, this foot being the sensor cue foot. So if you've ever tried to put on the sensor cue foot and find that you're having trouble, and I'm getting older, so I get 
you know, arthritis will start kicking in and some days are really bad. And I just can't quite coordinate this around so that it gets in there. If you get it into this position and then lower the foot, the needle, all of a sudden everything's out of your way and it makes it much easier to get on and get in position. I'm sorry, I keep hitting the camera. But it get to get on and get position. So do you guys get that? So let me bring my needle up. Yep, no, let me put you back. I got a mountain sewing. But what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and once I get this in the general vicinity, I will go ahead and lower my needle. I want to make sure that my needle is in the, the eye of this foot and it gets everything out of the way and it makes it much easier to um, get that on. So if you're struggling, give that a try. All right, I'm also going to change my thread because I was doing regular sewing, which I will do again. And everybody knows the proper way to change your thread is to grab your thread from the top and yank it out, right? No, you're going to use your scissors. You're going to cut from the top and pull it out from the needle. Now, I know that some of you guys are thread quarters and you don't want to lose those couple of inches of thread but i'm telling you that pulling the thread backwards the machine is designed to run the thread forward and when you yank it backwards there's little gizmos in there that just pull the lint off of it and it just starts building up lint in places we really don't want it so if you think about it this way is for those of you that don't want to waste that couple of inches of thread. Um, think about how much it costs to repair uh, or clean or tune up your machine um, and weigh the cost of the couple inches of thread, which is like a, a fraction of a fraction of a cent to how much it costs to repair a machine or how long it takes. You know, some uh, places do in-house and some have to ship it out. So there's that as well. So I, it's a, it's a hard habit to break, but get in the habit of clipping from the top and pulling through. Um, it will protect your, your machine. So I am going to throw my white. And unfortunately, I was embroidering in the other room. So all my threads are over there, but we'll make it work. Because I always have thread around here. How's everybody doing? Any questions? Any comments? Any eye rolls? All right. So I'm going to go ahead and put this here. And we're just going to do a quick little um, baste around the outside. And I'm not going to stitch the whole thing out just for time but I will stitch so that's my little basting stitch and if you're unfamiliar with it the basting stitch is a temporary fix and for the for those of you that have a screen like so um if you ever get to the point where you're here and you're going, crap, I forgot to, to baste it, you can come down here in. So it's in your thread stitch out, your color order. But down at the bottom, there's a couple of little features here. And I know I've talked about them before. But the first one, if I click on the little flower with the box around it, that will open up my basting options. So very, very handy to know about. And then this next one with the little flower is my favorite. This is ghost mode. When ghost mode is on, like it is now, what 
you only see the stitches that you're going to be stitching right now. If I turn ghost mode off, you see all of the stitches. So I personally love ghost mode because I like to know what color I'm going to be doing next. Um, and especially if you're one of those that, that um, pick out your thread as you go, uh, which I am. So when I have a very complex design, I will pick out my, my threads beforehand. But when I have something silly like this, I will just go, I just need a yellow, I need a white, I need a black, and I will just grab whatever in arm's reach. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to stitch out the um, wings. So thanks. I'm glad that uh, you found that tip attaching the cue foot uh, easier because I agree. I do think it's much easier as well. And one of the things too, so I'm going to go ahead and stop it. If you start seeing it puckering here or anything like that, you can come and move your magnets or add a magnet on the metal hoops. You can have up to eight magnets. You do not want to use more than eight magnets. So I'm putting one more over here and I'm going to just because I'm seeing a little puckering and I know it's flat. So are there any questions while this is stitching out? So I am going to just stitch the one B. So what I've done is I've stopped the thread. I'm going to come here and I'm going to come down here and say I want to go into my yellow. I will clip my thread up here, pull my thread through, grab my yellow. So instead of doing part of the design, I'll just do one of the B's because I love the screen that allows me to fast forward through my colors the way I'm doing. Also, whenever you have a thread where I've gone and I've used my automatic needle threader and it doesn't automatically needle thread, that means that the thread is wrapped around, something else is going on because it should just work. So when it doesn't work, um, just make sure that it's wrapped the right way. If you sew on vinyl with tool below it, can you use the same technique? What do you mean vinyl with tool below it? Can you def can you clarify that for me? So, I mean, you can sew on vinyl and you can sew on tool. And especially when it comes to vinyl, I personally pre love my metal hoops because uh, when it's vinyl or any of those high pile um, fabrics like uh, velvets or corduroy or anything that has a high pile, it will tend to, uh, the hoops can burn the marks into the fabric and you'll never get them out. So with vinyl, I love using the metal hoops, uh, vinyl, leather, um, my high piles, etc. 
Either that or you will hoop the stabilizer and float the fabric on top to keep from hooping that. So I'm not sure if that's what you mean. So shoot. So you want to add vinyl underneath the tool. So you want tool. My brain is thinking. Um, so you want vinyl with tool on top and stitch that out. Is that what? what you're asking making a sun catcher I don't know what that is um, sun catcher. let me change this um, let me change this right quick and I'm going to Google Sun Catcher real quick. Oh, I know why. Here we go. Let me Google a Sun Catcher real quick. Everybody, Let me make sure this is all checked in and adjusted. Oh. All righty. work I just said that that you just work is that why your memory is because because my grandson is like that so as soon as you tell him he's doing something correctly he has to mess up and I don't know if it's because he gets embarrassed or he's a rebellious so let me wrap Thought I had a piece of uh, clear vinyl out there. So let me take a look what a sun catcher is. Um, oh, cute. So, yes. Yes, you could do that um, to make a sun catcher. So it would kind of be the same thing. You can, um, so you can either sew the tool by itself and then attach it to um the vinyl so like some of them that i'm looking at right here look almost like stained glass so there's a little bit of stuff and then like the black line so you could do that on tool and then attach that to the vinyl or whatever you want to do but you can stitch on both tool and vinyl exactly the way i'm doing here so even if you were to stack them up um it would be the exact same way i'm doing here and so if that helps would you still use up to eight magnets on the 100 by 100? Um, you can, uh, but if you're doing something that small, usually you don't need it. Um, now, I will do little onesies um, with the 100 by 100 hoop. And with that one, I use the little metal um, fabric guides. Um, 
do I have one? So the little fabric metal guides, they're a little piece of, of metal that is, it's kind of folded. It's, it looks like an L shape and they will attach with the magnets. So I do use those with my 100 by 100 uh, because I want to hold the fabrics out of the way because it's such a tight little, usually such a tight little hoop um, that I do use the little fabric guides uh, quite a bit with my 100 by 100. All right, oops, let's move this again. So here I've got the little, um, oops, it's still in the wrong place. So here I've got my little bumblebee. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take my magnets off because I'm, I will add more to him, but I can add more later. And by just doing the one bumblebee, it makes it easier to add stuff later. All right, so I'm going to get the uh, the arm embroidery arm out of the way. Now, one of the things here now when we have this little guy so I can pull out my basting stitch. So when I come in here, I'm just going to get my little basting stitch and just kind of pull him out because he's a little basting stitch. And yes, I'm being a little rough uh, in it. How rough I am just depends on what fabric I'm using. This is such an open weave that it looks harsher than it is uh, because this just really pulls out really quickly. So it looks like I'm really abusing my fabric, but I'm really not. And then once I've got all this out, oh, come on. Oh, there you are. There you go. All right. So once I've got all this out, this little portion here will just pull right off. So this really kind of acts like a tearaway. And I'm not going to worry about anything that's in the little nooks and crannies because when I throw it into the water soluble stable or the water soluble, when I throw it into the water, it will dissolve away. Now, when it comes to the Aqua Magic, I do like to trim this down before I throw it into the water. Now, with the exception of, as I mentioned earlier, if I'm doing freestanding lace, I will throw more of this in the bowl of water because I want more of this stiffener to be on the base part. But on tool, I don't want that. I want it just to be my design. So I'm gonna carefully I'm gonna carefully trim around this. Another little tip when it comes to using this Aqua Magic is I know it's very tempting to go over to the iron and give it a nice press and see how everything looks and all that kind of good stuff. But don't. Make sure that you get the water soluble out of there first because if you by any chance hit that with steam, it is going to suck up your design and make a gooey mess and it makes it very hard to straighten it back out. But you see how, how cute that is? So I'm going to pop these back in and just look around and pop these back in. 
So when I'm done rinsing it and letting it dry, it'll be ready for for your picnic table. <laughs> So cute, cute, huh? So, I mean, think about it, like wedding gifts, baby showers, um, you know, anything that's going to be outside is a very, very easy to whip up. So any questions about that? All right. <clears throat> so these are the ready-made ones. And again, I hang on to this. Like I said, I've, you know, feel like I'm beating a dead horse, but I do... Hang on to that uh, because I, I am frugal, just like the rest of us. Let me get that out of the way. And I'm going to magnets with my hoop. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and take my uh, foot off and put my ankle back on. Again, it's much easier to find when it has the foot attached. And that comes from searching for that little white ankle so many times that I was like, oh, I'm just going to leave the foot off. All right. So when it comes to making a cover, like I said, there are so many patterns on out there. So if you were just to Google food covers, there's round ones and square ones and rectangle ones and... Um, Lot, they're all pretty much have netting, uh, and so any of those would work. Just add embroidery before you stitch it up, which is kind of what I've done here. Whoops, what I've done here. So this guy, these are all embroidered for my little foretop. And what I say it's a foretop is it's going to make this nice little square to cover my food. Now, on this one, this particular pattern asked, and I, I use inspiration as from the patterns. I don't always just straight up take them. Um, but they had a, a, a cover up down here, but it was raw edge on the other side. So what I did was I just folded, I doubled my width, folded it in half, and then stitched it and then flipped it. So let me show you. Now, for those of you that have the integrated dual feed, this comes in very handy with working with nets. So you can work with net without it, but it does come in very handy. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna switch back over to my regular sewing. And And I stitch it together with my quarter inch foot. So I've basically, yes. So I've basically, can you guys see? Not really. No. So you guys are little filled like you're a little upside down. There we go. All right. There we go. So I'm just going to line up the uh, the raw edge to the edge of the tool. And I want my needle boom. So this is what I did. Then I came and I pressed it so that this was all facing up. So I'm not going to run over to my iron. So I'm going to do my best little finger press here. 
And from here, I love using my feet. So I can use my quarter inch foot, but I have all of these feet that I spend money for and I'm going to make sure I use them. So this is the left edge top stitch foot. I'm going to show you how I use this. So with the left edge top stitch foot, this is so nice. So let me show you. But if you can see, I don't know if you can see, but there is a little red mark here. You see how there's this little red mark here and there's this little red mark here. And if you look under the foot, you can see there's a little, it's raised here. So fabric will fit underneath this side. So I can butt my fold right up there and stitch right next to my seam. Let me show you. So whenever you see my samples, for those of you that have seen my samples up close and wonder how I get my top stitching so nice, this is how I do it. And as you can see, I'm just going to let the, the foot fabric butt right up against that little raise there. Oops, right in the way. Do as I say, not as I do. But look how straight that is. Look at that. Oh my goodness, it's so exciting. And then I do the same thing at the top. Now at the top, I will sometimes use my edge stitching or edge joining and then move my needle around. But what's so nice about this foot is I do not even need to change my needle. I can just pop right down. I mean, look at that. Look how nice that is. So this is what's called edge stitching, or it's a needle with the way. Sometimes you'll see a pattern that says needle with the way. This is how you do it. And it is so nice. When I talk about the other way to do it is with the edge joining or the edge stitching. So the edge joining has a blade in the center. So this is one of these feet that every everyone should have. Everyone should have the edge stitching. Everyone should have the edge joining because these are so useful. Now, if I wanted to do another stitch, I could do this and I can select my stitch that's all the way over to the left. And I can either use my edge stitching or my edge joining. I've got my edge joining on here. So it's going to move one uh, just a knot nudge over. But if I wanted to use the edge stitching foot with the blade off to the side, you can see how I can get a nice top stitch by doing that. So when I want the double rows of top stitching, I'm just going to do this one. I'm going to go back. Yes, do get your thread out of the way before you start. Don't. And I'm going to. The other thing is we can move our needles over all we want. So whenever I'm doing. my edge stitching, 
and change this so you can see it come out the back too because it's kind of boring not to see. All right. But when I moved it too far. There we go. All right. But when we go here, you can see how this I use the edge, the edge stitching with the edge right the blade right on the edge, and it allowed it to go right to the edge. And then I move my needle over because I can change the position. The edge stitching or the edge joining has the blade in the center. So, and then I can move my needle over as well. So I can create all kinds of beautiful straight edge stitching, top stitching, all kinds of fun stuff. So it's the edge joining with the one at the middle. The edge stitching is the one with the end and the left edge top stitch. Those are the three that I, when it comes to sewing my straight edges and stuff, these are the three that I always use. So any questions about that? But look how beautiful that is. I just get such a kick out of it. I mean, it's so beautifully straight. I don't know about you, but I get excited about that. All right. So this is how I did my, my little tops and my bottoms there. Okay. So what we're going to do, whoo, I'm out of time. All right, so I am running out of time, but I will try and do one little guy. Um, the other thing that I did was I made a little, a little handle. So this little guy will sit right at the top of the handle. So this is how I will put it on and off of my little foods. So let me put on my quilting foot. And let me put on my quilting foot attachment. And I will try and at least get it partially done. I'll put my needle back in the center. And what I do here is I want to stitch this portion of it. I don't want it to be right on the edge when I add the binding. I want it to be able to fold over. So I'm going to leave a little tail that I can tuck under and just add a couple of stitches. So what I do is I come in and I'm going to lower my foot and just having that down helps create a little bit of a press. And when I come up here, what I want to do, when I come up here, I want to make sure that I'm going to come all the way up to the needle. So now that I've given it a little press, I want to come all the way up to the needle and usually about a little bit past that so, because I'm going to be taking some of these stitches out to tuck that end in. So you can do this manually where you stitch it and flip it. Um, but I am, now my friends call me efficient. <laughs> I call myself lazy. I'm always looking for the fastest way to do something. But if you've never used the uh, binding attachment before, this is fantastic. Um, there's two sizes. This is the half inch, um, but there is also the five eighths inch. And then there's also the little magnifying lenses, which are so awesome. So mine's there. I'm not gonna be using it right now. But I am going to feed this through. And as you can see, I've actually stitched this together uh, prior just to kind of hold it together so I wasn't going to be fighting with everything all at one go. And this is cut on the bias.
And what this will do is I'm going to go ahead and when I get to the top here, I want to make sure that everything is out of the way so that I can come to the other top here. So I'm basically coming up one side, all the way across one side of the panel. So this is my panel. So I'm going to catch this seam. But if you just think about it, I've got just one panel up and I'm going to stitch down both sides of that one panel. But I don't want to get anything else caught as I do that. And it'll make more sense when I open it up so you guys can see. So this is what happens when you don't pay attention. I want to show you how you can straighten this out because I've done this before. Oh, it's going to be ornery. It's because I'm on camera that it's going to be ornery. But normally what you can do when this happens is you'll just dental floss it, even if you have to go way out like I did. Um, but I want this to get back into the little fold that it was in prior to messing up. All right, we're out of time, so let me, I'll show you how to fix this when it, this kind of stuff happens. So what had happened, just to kind of prevent it, is when I have a really long piece, like I do to go over all of this, um, I do have to pay attention to how it feeds off here. And I, if you've ever watched my binding attachment video, I have a thread stand that I wind this on and it keeps it even. But what happened was I was paying so much attention to what I was doing and I was not paying attention to my tail that my tail got away from me because I did not have it threaded properly. So here you can see, but here you can see, this is what I'm saying. Here's my front piece and I've stitched all the way across. And when I do the next one, I'm gonna do just the opposite piece and it'll do the same thing. So I end up with the two sides with me. So I have, so I have this guy with the binding going all the way across. And then I would flip this completely over and I would do the binding all the way across this portion as well. So now I have the two bindings on. And I will take this little handle and tuck it right in between the two little bindings and stitch those little bindings together. And it creates, oops, and it creates a little tent going around. Now with the ends, what I do here is I would cut this off and then come up and press this up so that I can get this into the little ends 
and then stitch that down. So when it's all stitched down, it'll it'll fold over and stitch like that. Now, how I would come and correct this is again, I would cut off the excess, make it more manageable. And then I would have to take it over to the iron and just give this all a good press and get that back in position. See there? So it's easy to get this back in. It's much easier if you just wrap your um, tail and keep your tail into in control before you start. So again, there's these little guys. I will post a picture of this on my Mickey Sews Who's Going to Viking page. So I'll finish this up and I'll post it so you guys can see what it looks like uh, finished. And the next uh, Who's Going to Viking live is going to be Wednesday, June 21st at 2 p.m. Eastern or 2 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Eastern with Meredith, Miss Meredith, doing the patchwork flower circular attachment hot pad. It is the cutest thing you ever saw. So you want to make sure that you tune in because it's super, super cute. And the next MySonet Live is Wednesday, June 14th at 2 p.m. Central with Kathy Fromm. And she's going to be ta uh, tackling the endless and encore embroidery. So you don't want to miss those. And if there's no final question, so if you type fast and you have a final question, um, if not, uh, make sure to watch. I will post it on this Facebook Live, the link to my Mickey Sows Who's Going Viking, so that you can. Um, so, yeah, Meredith caught me. She just left a little message. Can't say the last name. I can, except when I'm on camera. So uh, it's uh, Kathy uh, uh, Meredith. McClanahan. So it's one of those. Um, I did. I got I stumbled over it. So I skipped it. So that she called me out on it. Anyway, so I'm going to post this. Um, I'll post this so you can see it finished. Um, and like I said, just if you Google food covers, there's just a, a ton of them out there. And all of them can be embroidered. So whatever you like to do. Um, and once again, thanks for coming. And I will look forward to seeing you again. And I will check the comments uh, to make sure that I didn't miss anything. And really appreciate you guys. So talk to you later. Bye.